Hi, good morning. Welcome back. This is Escape Forever Free. I'm your girl Faith. Here we are stepping out with Faith to restore physical, mental, spiritual, and social wholeness. If it is your first time joining, I welcome you with a special welcome. For all those who are our um, subscribed members, a very extra, extra special welcome to you. Thank you for staying with the team. So this morning's video is committed to the helping us to build the healthy habit of spending one hour alone time with God every single day. It's called our Kickstart One Hour Alone Time with God Devotional Guide. So you start with us and then you choose your best sacrificial time for each day. You watch this video and then you continue for one hour, you and God alone. So this provides that support for you to be accountable, you know, so you can build that consistency. If, you're, if you are not subscribed as yet, we invite you to please go ahead click the bell icon and subscribe and also share this video so others too can come and enjoy the benefits of this support. We are using the great controversy as our one hour kickstart devotional guide for this season and we are using the 1888 version of the great controversy so we prefer if you have that version of it. We also use the King James Bible very closely in tandem with that so we also ask that you grab your king james version of the bible when you are doing this kickstart and when you're going into your alone time with god you can grow from here to more advanced material in bible study as well as spiritual readings that of course concur with the bible doctrines all right so we're now going to go into prayer and get further into our routine again we are very happy to have you please stay with us let us pray father we thank you for a brand new day we thank you for another week in the first month of the year as we continue in it father there is nothing we can do good for ourselves we give back this gift of life that you have granted us this day into your hands we pray for a re-consecration and a re-anointing of your holy spirit we even pray and beg that you pour out your early rain and latter rain respectively within us father so we can be ready for the times that are ahead and above all will be sealed in your truth and light and be ready to enter into the kingdom of god but may all of us in the hearing of this this session this prayer be blessed be edified father and may you guide us into eternal life in jesus name amen all right so we are now going to go into our memory text so every week we try to commit a text to memory and we try to recite it on Friday. Of course, the bigger aim is to rem is to know it for our present, our future, as the Holy Spirit gives us leading. So we're now going to go into our scripture reading and for this week, our scripture is coming to us from Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. And it says, And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. One more time, Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. May God help us to recall it in due season and to use it to edify souls, even our very own, and to bring glory to his name. All right, so we're back into chapter 8, which is entitled um, Luther Before the Dad, and we will pick up from paragraph 163.1. So Luther would have done his presentation before the dad, and now it was pronounced upon him that he should be um, given the full force of the papacy in being tried and even excommunicated so let us go however one thing it was insisted by the emperor that he um he should be by the by the um it was insisted however by the elector the, the elector that he should be given safe conduct elector frederick that he should be given safe conduct 
to return home before any amount of um, trial was put upon him for all the allegations of the papacy. All right, so let's continue now. Two conflicting opinions were now urged by the member by the members rather of the Diet. The emissaries and representatives of the Pope again demanded that the reformers' safe conduct should be disregarded. Quote, the Rhine, they said, quote, should receive his ashes as it received those of John Huss an, a century ago. End of quote. But princes of Germany, though themselves papists and avowed enemies to Luther, protested against such a breach of public faith as a stain upon the honor of the nation. They pointed to the calamities which had followed the death of Huss and declared that they dared not call down upon Germany and upon the head of their youthful emperor a repetition of these terrible evils. There's somebody putting them in them place, eh? Even those who are against you will stand for you when Christ is in the vessel with you. Charles himself, continuing to read, Charles himself, in answer to the base proposal, said that though faith should be banished from all the earth, earth, it ought to find refuge with princes. He was still further urged by the most bitter of Luther's popish enemies to deal with the reformer as Sigismund had had de dealt with Huss, abandon him to the mercies of the church. But recalling the scene when Huss in public assembly had pointed his chains as point had pointed to his chains and remained and reminded the monarch of his plighted faith, Charles V declared, quote, I would not like to blush like Sigismund. End of quote. Almighty God. Look at the poet God at work there. No weapon formed against us who are who are God's children can prosper. No weapons. Let's continue to read. Yet Charles had deliberately rejected the truths presented by Luther. Quote, I am firmly resolved to tread in the footsteps of my ancestors. End of quote, wrote the monarch. He had decided that he would not step out of the path of custom, even to walk in the ways of truth and righteousness. Because his fathers did, he would uphold the papacy with all its cruelty and corruption. What a sad thing when men can be bought and sold even by traditions. Wow. Let us continue to read. Thus he took his position, refusing to accept any light in advance of what his fathers had received or to perform any duty that he had not performed. Now this, my friend, to comment again, is what we call blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. To receive truth and conviction of divine things and to resist it is blasphemy. And if this man should die unrepentant of this sin, there is no possible way that he could be saved. Because the scripture teaches that that is the one sin that is unforgivable. Not that you cannot repent of it, but that if you die in that same position, there is no hope for salvation. For anybody who dies in such a position, blaspheming truth and light that they are fully convicted of, which means having full conviction of truth and light and living up in opposition to it. That is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and there is no possibility that you can die in that position and be saved because to him who is known to, be, to, to do good and do evil, to him it is sin and no sin can enter heaven so it's very simple it might seem complicated to many of us when they and it's also very highly misunderstood as to what is meant when the bible teaches that all sins can be forgiven however blasphemy against the holy ghost is unforgivable so by extension it is simply saying if you remain with unforgiven sins then you are not you cannot possibly be saved to enter into heaven understand that clearly so any sin that we hold on to having a conviction that it is sin is blasphemy 
of the Holy Ghost because it's the Holy Ghost who would have convicted you to know that it is sin. All right, I hope we understand that a little bit better. And as I said, if this, um, if this um, Charles was the, was supposed to be to die in this position without um, repenting of this position that he just stated he, that he would take Charles, that is, then he could not be, and he will not be, if that's how he died, in the kingdom of God. Let us continue to read. There are many at the present day thus clinging All right, let's continue. There are many at the present day thus clinging to the customs and traditions of their fathers. When the Lord sends them additional light, they refuse to accept it because not having been granted to their because because to accept it because not having been granted to their fathers, it was not received by them. Remember, let me comment again. No man can secure your salvation for you. It's a personal and individual um, acceptance of the gift and therefore the traditions of your father should not be um, your ultimate or penultimate guide to deciding upon truth and light it cannot be it is very foolish and very fatal for you to be guided thus let's continue to read all right so So let me continue from here. When the Lord sends them additional light, they refuse to accept it because not having been granted to their fathers, it was not received by them. We are not placed where our fathers were. Consequently, our duties and responsibilities are not the same as theirs. We shall not be approved of God in looking to the example of our fathers to determine our duty instead of searching the word of truth of truth for ourselves our responsibility is greater than was that of our ancestors we are accountable for the light which they received and which was handed down as an inheritance for us and we are also accountable for the additional light which is now shining upon us from the word of God so I hope we get that very clear. All right. So let's do the last paragraph. Said Christ of the unbelieving Jews in St. John 15 and verse 22. Turn your Bibles with me. St. John 15 verse 22. Let us read. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sin. They had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. Got that clearly? So what Christ is saying, if they did not know, they would be guilty of nothing. But because they know and refuse, they're guilty. And that's exactly what I was explaining. So that's St. John 15, verse 22. The same divine power had spoken through Luther to the emperor and princes of Germany. And as the light shone from God's word, his spirit pleaded for the last time with many in that assembly. As Pilate Centuries before permitted pride and popularity to close his heart against the words the world's redeemer as the trembling Felix bear the messenger of truth quote go thy way for this time when I have convenient session I will call thee that's written in Acts 24 and verse 5 let's turn our Bibles Acts 24 and verse 25 it says and as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient session, I call for thee. Now that again, Acts 24 verse 25, is another example of, of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So Felix there in Acts, um, and the encounter with Paul making his presentation to Pilate and the group of um, of them, Felix included, and all of those kings who wanted to be entertained, um, they were had received conviction but refused it. Felix there being demonstrated as one of the prime ones and also the proud Agrippa. Let's go to Acts 26 verse 28. Again, we're getting full of juice into explanation of the the meaning of blaspheming the holy spirit let's read acts 26 and verse 28 and it says then agrippa said unto paul almost 
master thou persuadest me to be a Christian so again we have Agrippa there receiving conviction making a claim to cover it up that he was still a little bit unsure and that again blaspheming the Holy Spirit can be identified there so let's just continue to read so the book of Acts with those men who put Paul on trial are provide very good examples of how we can blaspheme how the Holy Spirit can be blasphemed against let's continue to read um, yet turned away sorry so all these men yet turned away from the heaven sent message so also had Charles the fifth yielding to the dictates of worldly pride and policy decided to reject the light of truth any of us end of reading will stop there for today we'll find ourselves in a similar position to charles v to agrippa or to Pilate. we all will be guilty of the same fate which is damnation and 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 barring from the kingdom of God. So the New Jerusalem will not be a gate that any such person can or will enter through. May we, none of us, find ourselves in such a place. Let us go to our meditational hymn as we close this segment of our one hour alone time with God. Turn your eyes upon Jesus is still our song. We'll do stanza one as we also commit hymns to memory. O oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your exemplification this morning that gave us such clear examples of how it is that your Holy Spirit can be blasphemed. Father, we pray that none of us in the hearing of this prayer and this message will be found guilty of blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. And if we are guilty of, may we know and hereby repent and put preparation in place immediately to repent of these blasphemings in our lives, whether past or present. May for the future, we be willing to accept truth and light when the holy spirit convicts us of such and even may we be willing to search for after it when we know where we can find it because that in itself <laughs> refusing to be enlightened by the light that is available is also <laughs> blaspheming the holy ghost father may we not be found guilty we beg may we seek and search after truth and light and when any such thing being claimed is presented to us may like the bearings we examine it with intelligent and humble spirits to find out if it is indeed truth and light or error represented as angelic lights in jesus name we pray amen and amen father we thank you again for today let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be known always acceptable in thy sight O lord our strength and our redeemer please walk good but above all follow the blueprint astutely not the traditions of your foreparents search after god for yourself you will be calling to account for your life on an individual level may god through his mercies and the blood of jesus christ and your choice of him in obedience save you for eternal living in jesus name god bless you see you in our next video